Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be studying about database management systems. So in the previous video, we had studied what is a manual record keeping system and what are its limitations or disadvantages. Then we also studied about the file system, the computerized file saving system. And in that also, we understood various limitations of the file system and how databases came up, what is the database management system. So today in this video, we'll be doing in depth what is a DBMS, that is a database management system, and what are some important terms that you must know about the same. So starting with what is a DBMS, as I uh, told you in the previous video also, a DBMS is basically a interface. It is an interface that allows the users of a database to create the database, to access the database and to maintain the database. Okay, so it is an interface between the database and the users. Okay. Now, there are different types or different examples of database management systems that, we, uh, that are very popular and you can see them being used in your daily life as well. So, the most common examples of DBMS include MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL, MongoDB and SQL Server. There are many others, you can name them also. Now, DBMS provides an abstract view of data. So, these are the points uh, that highlight why you need DBMS. DBMS is important because it is providing you an abstract view of data. Now, what is an abstract view? Abstract view basically means that if a user has requested some data, the DBMS will only provide that particular requested data and hide all kinds of unnecessary details about how the data is stored, how the data has been maintained in the database. Okay, so only the information that has been requested will be visible. So in the traditional file system, when files were stored in computer, when you used to open a file or if any user has to access some part of the file, he or she would have the access to the complete file. Only when the complete file was opened, then only you could get the information. But that is not the case with DBMS and that is what it is. Uh, that is why it is more uh, used, it is more secure and it is better than a traditional file system. Now, as I told you, DBMS is an interface between the database and its users. So you can imagine it like this, that you have a database where the data is actually stored. Then you have a DBMS which interacts with the users. It takes the commands which the users give and then this DBMS gives those commands to the database. Then the database gives the results back to the DBMS and the DBMS will give the requested results to the users. Now DBMS can handle multiple users at the same time. This was again not possible with the traditional file system. Okay, and DBMS also ensures that no mixing of information takes place even when multiple users are accessing the same database at the same time. So therefore, DBMS allows multiple users to access the data and it allows to access the data simultaneously and it does so by maintaining a single data repository. So it means there are two important points here. Firstly, DBMS allows multiple users to access data simultaneously. That means at the same time. And it does so by maintaining a single copy of the database uh, at a central location. So multiple copies are avoided. So duplicacy or redundancy gets avoided. Okay. Therefore, uh, DBMS that allows users to create, access or modify data are present either in the form of graphical user interface 
or in the form of command line systems. So there are multiple options that you can use in the form of DBMS that I explained before. And each of these DBMS either come as a graphical user interface in which you just have to drag and drop and do not uh, write the exact commands. Whereas in the command line system, you have to be very specific about how you have to request the information, okay? Now, retrieving the data from the database through the DBMS is known as querying the database, okay? So, whenever you have to access the data that is present in a database, you will give a command to the DBMS and this process is known as querying the database. So, querying is performed using a special language which is known as the query language and what is a query? A query is any command that asks the database to give the user the requested data and show it in a way that has been requested. So basically, query is any kind of command that is given to the database for retrieving or for accessing the data from the database in a particular manner. So if the user is saying that I do not want the entire data, I just want two columns and the last two rows, then this is a query and the DBMS along with the database is responsible for showing the results of the query as per user request. Okay. Now this is a a snapshot or an example of the tables that are stored in a DBMS rather a database generally relational databases that we will be studying in the next class consist of tables tables basically store different kinds of information so this is a student table then you have a guardian table so this is the information corresponding to the file system that we had studied in the previous uh, video. So now you can see that previously the file stored the entire information for all the guardians along with the student records. But in this case, only the guardian ID has been stored. So this saves extra information. And once you know the guardian ID, you can directly uh, link this table with this table and look up this particular guide guardian id and find the entire record okay another thing that you must take care here is that you must notice is that this particular record and this particular record had the same guardians and the information was being repeated but now since we are only maintaining guardian id so we can write the same ids here and the information is only stored once in the guardian table. So again, duplicacy, redundancy is avoided. Okay, storage space is saved. Similarly, this is the snapshot of the attendance table where the names of the students are not there. So there is no redundancy. There are minimal chances of inconsistency because inconsistency happens when the same information is present at different places. Then data is linked with each other. It is not isolated. As we saw in the previous slide also, this particular column of the student table is linked with the guardian table, the first column of the guardian table. Also, there is no data dependence and application dependence on the format of data. And finally, the data is being shared among different users, among the tables as well. Okay. So now there are some important terms that you must remember along with the uh, DBMS or the database systems. The first such term is the database schema. So schema basically defines what is the structure of your database and by structure we basically mean how the data is stored in the database that means how many tables are present, what tables are present. You have the student table, you have the guardian table. Then in each of the tables, what type of data is stored, whether the data is numeric, whether the, uh, the names are written in character form or what else data type exists for other columns. 
what is the relationship between different tables so all this is defined under the database schema similarly information lights each table contains how many attributes that means columns how many columns are present in each table what are the data type of information uh, that is present in each column what are the restrictions or constraints that are imposed on different tables and so on so all the information about the structure of the database and the structure of each of the constituent tables is known as the database schema altogether now we discussed what are constraints so let us take this uh, point also constraints are basically the restrictions that are imposed on the type of data that is stored in databases now these restrictions are basically applied on the values that are present in the table that have to be inserted in the table so what are the examples of constraints examples can be a non null constraint non null constraint means that if a table has been imposed a non null constraint then that particular table cannot have empty values or a particular column of that table cannot have empty values okay similarly unique constraint so uh, the example of a non null constraint would be um say every student will have a roll number so the roll number value cannot be empty for any student so this is a non null constraint now we have a unique constraint the same uh, column can also have a unique constraint roll numbers are unique no two students will have the same roll number similarly there is a data type constraint say the uh, phone numbers of the students are always numeric they cannot be characters then the length of the data is also a constraint that can be imposed now coming to the third important term which is the metadata so metadata means the data about the data that is present in the database that means metadata gives you information or it describes the data that is present in the database so it is information about the contents of the database okay now what is this information this information is basically consisting of two parts the schema that is what that means what is the structure of the database and the constraints imposed on the database so in simpler terms you can understand that for any image its metadata is the type of image whether it is a png image jpeg image the number of pixels or uh, the size of the image so information about the image is metadata the image itself is a data it is some uh, value it is some information and the information about that image is the metadata of that image so metadata is also known as a catalog or a data dictionary okay now coming to database instance now database instance basically means that at any point in time whatever are the contents of the database they will make up the instance of that database at that particular time so basically the state of the database at any given time is known as the database instance now it it can also be known as the snapshot of the database at that particular point okay so initially when the database has only been created and no values have been filled then at that particular instance the database will be empty so the instance of the database will be empty now as you go on filling up values modifying the database deleting values the instances will change so every time the data is updated in any form whether new information is added or deleted or modified then new instances of the database will be created new states of the database will be created also uh, the a single database can have multiple instances throughout its lifetime now the last two concepts for this video are data manipulation and database engine 
so data manipulation is the term that we use for any kind of modification of the contents of a database so when the data in a database gets changed it is known as data manipulation and there are basically three operations that are included in data manipulation either you add new information or you remove existing information or you update the existing information okay now coming to database engine Database engine is a collection of programs that will allow the database management system to create the database, to update it and to manipulate it using different queries. So basically, whenever, the, uh, whenever a user has to access the database for reading its contents, writing or modifying its contents, it will send out a query then the dbms the database management system along with the database engine will run that query on the database retrieve the information that the user wanted and give that information to the user okay so this was all about database management systems and some important terms related to it i hope you have understood all these concepts so that's all for today's video thank you for watching Please let us know how you find our videos. So that's all for today. Till we meet in the next video. Mind your exam.